you can do it on your own, by yourself, in a park, just like that. Doctor Photos. Hi and welcome! Today, two parts of the video. First one, we will talk about how to make the red scarf product photography like you can see right now. Second part, we will be editing this using Capture One. In the first part, we will be focusing how I did it and what is my idea of doing something on your own and God bless there are mobile phones so we can do this remotely, more or less, you will see in a minute. And second part, how to edit this so it will be nice, crisp. So let's start. This is how I actually look while taking the photo. I can manipulate my camera on the mobile. And as you can see, on a click, I can change the focus points. There's obviously a little bit of an issue with the shadow, as you can see. So here you can see the actual shadow on me from the camera. So this is not the best thing I can think of, but let's try and work with that. You can try to make it under a little bit of different angle so the camera will be pointing the shadow here instead of on me. This is my setup, tripod, can 8D, everything hanging for more sturdiness on the tripod and those are our shadows. Light is straight behind so we want to move from that direction a little bit to the left so the shadow from the tripod and the camera won't fall on us. Here you can see me trying to get the best out of it. I'm using a Sigma 1835 and of course the Canon app on my mobile phone, which makes life a lot easier. If you have something like this, you always have to use it. As you can see, I'm changing all the settings, checking out the exposure, and eventually if something is not there, you can always crop this because the product is the red scarf, so this has to be in the photo, rest, we can crop this out, 24 megapixels is more than enough to have the big, nice and crispy. Eventually you can blow it up in affinity later on. We could find something like this, so we will have the splashes of light and shadow on our faces or, or our body where we are photographing ourselves, but actually it, didn't, it wasn't looking so good, but let's just make it another run for it so I can show you how it looks. Remember about ever-changing conditions. If you need to move, do something like I do. Hook everything on a tripod on the bottom and just move it wherever you need. To the light, to the shadow, you can change the background, just simply change the place and be prepared for that because the light will not be there forever so those are our shadows and let's see how it goes as you can see the problems are the harsh lights somehow. for example me I got my mobile app for my Canon. I can eventually take a look at the flippy screen on the camera and this makes wonders for that. Otherwise, I would have to click the timer for 10 seconds, jump up here, maybe try to find the proper spot to have the perfect exposure and then take the image. It would take time and effort. So unfortunately, in that case, yes, the gear does matter, but now we just simply save time. Like this is the bottom line with all the gear we can buy anywhere that's the most important part. So remember, have a camera, tripod, and this is pretty much everything you need. You can do it on your own, by yourself, in a park, just like that. Remember that the biggest issue is to actually make the proper exposure and the focus part. You can of course focus manually, then come back to the camera, check it out, take a couple of snaps, get it back, check it out, and a couple of times we'll do it and everything will be okay, but this takes time. And this is the probably easiest part how you can do some product photography on your own in a park. Let's see the images once I will be home. So guys, welcome back to the office and let's take a look. This is what I had an issue with focusing while I was trying to do this without the cell phone. Why? Because first of all, you focus, then you wait 10 seconds, then the camera snaps a photo. It doesn't refocus, so if you are you're having a bad focus, that's it, you will be bad. And unfortunately, it's really hard to nail this, especially from a very short distance, if you are doing some product photography that requires more or less a very shallow depth of field. So you obviously want to have something that you can remotely change the camera settings and your focus points. And more than that, as you can see here, this is actually me trying to get the focus on the logo on the handmade stuff. This is obviously a great image because 
the exposure is pretty much nailed down, the details are there, there's not much to do, but let's try and do something. I usually go with highlights and whites to the max, to the left. I love Capture One because it works with shadows and with highlights and whites very, very well. It does the job awesomely. Shadows, I don't really need this, but what I would like to do, because I would like to have this a little bit darker and the main focus here on the scarf. So, standard vignette. Great, but still I want this middle part to be a little bit brighter, so I can go with brightness, but unfortunately everything will get brighter. With exposure, the same. So, my favorite part, it's a radial tool. Sorry, a radial filter. So we can do this here, that and here like this and we can go to layer invert mask and add a little bit of brightness to everything maybe just add head instead of more because as you can see it starts losing the details and it's over the top so we will, don't want that oh blacks not really we don't need we can add of course clarity for the sharpness or for this gloomy orton effect look but Probably we want this to look sharp as hell, so we can see the details in the in the plots. So there's that. Maybe, let's maybe desaturate this a little bit so it won't be that red. But unfortunately, this is how the images look. Okay, background. Uh, background meaning the whole image here. The white balance. I will leave it as this, and that's it. So what's the biggest uh, advantage? We did pretty much every image about the same time, so the color balance, the lights didn't change that much. It's pretty much, if you are done with this, like I do, we can of course I add a little bit of sharpening, it's always a good idea. You can just copy everything, Control shift c Control shift v for all other images, and boom, everything is pretty much done right now. And remember, that this also will copy the additional layer you added in Capture One. And like, for example, this image, I would say this is great. I just need to crop this. Let's just make it four and five for Instagram. And I would go with something like that. And here a cute, nice logo. And that's it. Nice, harsh evening light, everyone knows. We can, of course, touch up this a little bit here, for example. Maybe this spot here. There's nothing more to do. A little bit of harsh uh, harsh light here. We can of course do this in Affinity, it will be faster. But this is like the basics, the retouch, the colors. I would say this is great, but this is how about doing this for images, not editing this. But afterwards, you can triage your photos. Like as you can see, I had 70 images, now I have 33. And from this, the one star, two stars that will actually go to the customer, they're like, 20 from this I will pick up 10 max I usually go for 5 to 7 because then when I have to do manual work it takes me just simply less time because preset yes you can copy this but still manual fixes for every images if they are the same and usually are the same flaws it it takes a lot of time so as you can see classic different looks from left from right nailed logo and as you can see here, I'm trying to get a wider shot on my camera so I can crop this later on. But this is the shadow here. So, yeah, like this is... You need to learn on your errors and as you go, you will change everything and everything will be nice. But just remember to be mindful about small details to really nail them down so it will be the best you can do. So what else? This is obviously too dark. What can we add here? Exposure. And I would say it's already a lot, a lot better. I usually go with auto adjust, and afterwards I can change smaller details because it's easier for me. Eventually go with presets if you have some. I have my gothic light, but this is something totally different. Yeah, this is also, this pumps nice the, the details in the scarf here, but the colors are a little bit off. But this is, of course, you can always remove the curve changes, the color changes, like leave what you want. This is always only the start point, the presets. And I think that's all. We covered how we can do on your own some product photography, which is a scarf in that example, in a park, outside, outdoors, then edit this 
everything in one day. It does take time. It took me around two hours to make the images, get back, make a coffee, get dinner, and then around one and a half hour for post-processing everything in one sitting. I usually wait one day, so I will check this on the next day and so I can see if this is actually decent or this is just crazy. What was I thinking? Think about that. It works for me. And there you have it. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any comments, questions, feel free to hit me up in the comment sections. And bye for now.